Oh, shut off your phones when presenting. Yes. <laughs> so uh, this is one of my personal favorites here, <laughs> Luke Nosek. Um, and uh, he is going to talk about space, and he is the board of directors of SpaceX, um, as well as many amazing other companies that he's involved in. Um, and so I hope you enjoy this talk. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Uh, wow, this room filled up fast. So, I'm, I, I'd like to ask a question today and give a possible answer, and that's why should humans colonize space? And if this was a science fiction convention a few years ago, this would not be even a, a question, but this is a group that is asking the big questions of what are the most important things, what are the most important problems to solve for the human race? And actually mobilize our resources and our engineering talents and our, and our capital um, and time and everything on those problems. And there's a lot of competing things here. I mean, we have you know, we have curing aging, we have rebooting the U.S. government, um, we have like uh, kinky sex downstairs. There's a lot of things that we could be doing other than colonizing space. And um, colonizing space is really, really, really hard. Uh, kinky it, sex and colonizing space are mutually exclusive. <laughs> That's a fair point, though. We need uh, better vehicle designs for that. <laughs> um, I've, uh, I've been on the, the, the mock-up of the Dragon Council. Um, so, the other question, uh, to what, given these competing things, um, uh, why should we do this? Well, I'm backstopping a little bit, why is this even possible? So this, is a, this is a question right now is the reduction in, in launch costs that will be possible due to reusable vehicles. And what uh, we have stated uh, publicly at SpaceX is that uh, our, our target is to uh, get to 50 or, or $100 uh, a pound. And just as a, a comparison for why this is possible with, with reusable vehicles without getting into huge amounts of detail, uh, the uh, fuel costs for um, a uh, Falcon 9 vehicle, which is what SpaceX uh, produces and you know, is, is on the assembly line right now, uh, is on the order of $100,000. This is for a 10,000 uh, pound payload. So we are not uh, dominated by energy. Uh, we're not dominated by energy costs at all. We are dominated by, by maintenance and, 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 uh, and, and production costs. And if you look at the, the fuel cost for an airline industry, it's um, it's, on, it's on the order of a third or a half of the fuel, of, of the, the ticket price is, is spent on fuel. Um, and if we could get it to that point, then perhaps we could get humans into space. If, if we get to that point, we won. If we get to that point, um, we won. So my question is, what do we want? Why do we want to win this? There's a lot of things to do. And uh, my, uh, my answers are, um, a bit different from you know from uh, economics or uh, 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 you know materials or mining asteroids or, or or tourism, which are the things that we can see very easily today. Those are the markets that seem like they okay. Those are things that we do on Earth, and then, you know we're just going to replicate those. I think that we'll try to get something totally fundamentally different from space, and it's hard for us to remember this in our history because we haven't um, uh, colonized a new major landmass in a hundred years. So uh, it's not within our memory why people uh, came as far as they did to the United States to you know, hostile uh, territories and uh, in uh, what would have been a spacecraft that killed uh, you know, 10 to 50 percent of their astronauts uh, each time, not during the duration of the whole program, but on every trip, people died. So we were willing uh, to go through great expense and great risk. Our ancestors went to great expense and great risk to go into other lands. And, and why did they go? And how much did they spend for that? Well, um, it is uh, in the in the original colonization of, of the United States and in many other places. It was often the the entire net worth of a family that was spent. In fact, in my uh, my personal case, my family came from Poland. And we sold all our possessions, we sold our car, um, and we we actually had to use it to bribe a communist immigration official. Um, but in either case, the car the car is gone, um, and now we start with zero. 
and we moved into a, a new place. And, and many people sold, that, we, we came and we got jobs. Many people sold all their positions, possessions and then moved into a new world and then just hoped uh, that, well, there's going to be land and maybe some Indians will help us uh, and uh, we will survive. Why did they do this? And I, uh, what I submit is that the reason that for the first explorers, not the ones that come later who come for resources, but the first explorers to, to colonize um, are coming for primarily um, social and cultural reasons. They're, they're coming because they want to create a new world. They're trying to get away from an old world which has a certain way of being, a certain way of interacting, uh, a certain religion and spirituality, a certain politics, and they want to start from scratch somewhere that is that is far away. And some of this is political, uh, but some of this is merely social. So this is distinct from seasteading. Um, I don't. Uh, yeah, I think some of this could be done by creating uh, new new countries out in the middle of the water, but some of it has to be done um, a bit in a, in a, in a, a bit further out and with a bit greater distance. And if you look at some of the, the, the cultures that were created when, when the U.S. came, we, we still live with, with uh, some of the results. I mean, these are some, you know, these are definitely some experiments. There were, you know, the, uh, the Quakers that believed in, uh, like, uh, complete uh, pacifism and, and, and world peace. Um, and then we had the, 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 the Puritans, which uh, went off into the, um, uh, uh, which went off into, you know, creating their own kind of utopian uh, society. They happen to be based on Christianity because those are the major uh, religious uh, groups at that time. But they created different extreme um, cultures and they were able to build them from scratch uh, on U.S. soil. And I think that space will allow that. As soon as it drops to the cost of approximately all the possessions of a, of a, you know, a well-to-do family, um, people will, people will Small numbers of people will move to space. They will be the beachhead. It won't be the economics that will drive them. It will be the possibility of creating new worlds that will drive them. And what better place to create that new world than looking down on Earth? The inspiration of space has been its own draw for those who had the privilege of, of being astronauts, both uh, public, uh, publicly and, and privately. So there's there's something um, about that in terms of its uh, the environment that I think will be unique. The, the close quarters, the, the, the need to work with, with, with technology, uh, the, uh, the, the view from Earth, the view of, of, of space. I think all of that will impact the culture that will be created from the first settlers of this world. And uh, there are many different places that, that you can settle. Um, we often think, and, I, I, and the goal at SpaceX has been Mars, that we have to be able to at least go there because that seems like the best planet. Although there may be opportunities at easier to reach points as well. Um, if you have the, the technology to build a habitat uh, and, and grow your own food and re recycle ev everything and, and, and shield from radiation, um, we may be on asteroids, we may be in lo lo lower or, or, or higher orbits on the Earth, and we may be on the moon. But that is, um, that is, a, that is I think, what, the, the, what we'll see as a, as a beachhead for space colonization. We'll be, be actually recapitulating our history of the founding of this country. Uh, new political systems, uh, new cultures, um, maybe even new religions, all founded um, on uh, the, the incredible amount of independence that you can get when you are out of, completely out of reach uh, from, uh, from everybody else on Earth. And a seastead is, is simply um, not out of reach. And, a, and in, you know, intentional temporary community like Burning Man is simply not out of reach. And um, a, a least city-state, um, which some others are attempting, is also not out of reach. Uh, space, uh, if you go far enough, is out of reach. So that's what I'm. Uh, that's one of the reasons I'm very excited to be working in this area, and uh, that's one of the sources of capital that I think will be be coming in. Uh, from the first groups of settlers in outer space, and I'm excited to be at Bill and talking with all of you. Uh, I've got a few minutes now for questions. If anyone has uh, any any questions and discussions on uh, on space and space colonization. Okay, so so one of the first ideas, like why Europeans came to the quote unquote New World, had to do with what we the perceived value of what was there, right? If it was gold or spices or whatever it was. 
but what inevitably became the reason why we kept coming back was because of like tobacco, like we shipped tobacco throughout Europe and that ended up being profitable. In your mind and your vision for like what do you see as being that kind of, that foothold potentially in orbit or beyond? <laughs> so I think it may, um, it may even be enough to simply get people uh, off of this rock and away from the vast destruction of wealth that is caused by today's politics and culture. That may be the gold and the tobacco. The gold and tobacco is a negative one. It is the fact that every bit of technological and social productivity we have is just quickly eaten up by taxes and regulations and political and cultural breaks. So that may be enough, as long as it can be affordable. And those people may just be productive enough and creative enough if they can get away from the rest of us to, to create things of value for everybody. Um, I, I also want to answer as, as a second point, and that is uh, if, even if that, um, uh, uh, even if mining or resources or other thing, things like which would seem to be the more uh, you know, obvious and natural ones are not available <coughs> yet, uh, it, people who just want to be there, even at a high cost, are going to create a beachhead so that we'll get to those resources faster. So you're saying that it may be that you don't need to put in more money to make the trip and plant the colony than a collection of reasonably wealthy people have on their own. They won't have to go get investors who spend a return on that capital, which is what you were talking about. You know, we're going to go get gold. We're going to go and later on they figure out they could grow tobacco and sell it back in Europe for profit. So you're saying that, or your goal is to get the cost of getting there, wherever there is in space, plus the cost of establishing a beachhead colony low enough that people can essentially go do a Burning Man that's permanent in space. They won't have to worry about feeding profits back to a group of investors. That may come later as we do have those colonies and the resources are there. A, a rational Burning Man. Burning Man's a bunch of hippies. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, they're not. I love them. Yeah, they're not. No, I like them. But they're not. They're, they're, they're not satisfying. Maybe they are, but I don't think they're satisfying investors with Burning Man. No, they're not. They're, okay, they're, it just they're doing it out of their own collective wealth. Their own collective wealth right. and for their own collective joy. Right, exactly. Uh, and if they could be there the rest of the year, they would. They, if, if they could financially afford it and if the government allowed it, right. they would do it. Right. So, um, <laughs> I assume that SpaceX has projections on what it will cost to put, you know, to put a pound of um, matter into space. And um, you can probably go back and look and see what the, the financials on you know, the pilgrims coming to, to the U.S. Um, have you done that? And like, if you have, you know, where, where does that project out? Like, how, how far into the future um, do you think this would, have, this would take place? Like, is this a 50 year thing? We're within shooting distance if we can make the first version of the uh, usable Falcon 9. And that's based on like my back of the head calculations. Um, I, I, did, I did some research on the colonization of the U.S. and some of those early ships. You know, this is a long time ago at this point. I haven't rerun those numbers, but uh, we seem to be within kind of shooting distance. So how much do I have to say on what time frame? <laughs> um, so what we're targeting is something that would be um, in the uh, range of uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Per so person money. or family? Uh, that's for a person. And um, back here? I, I think it's um, a poor choice to think that it's an either or thing also. At the same time that you have people saying, screw this, I'm going to go off and homestead, there will be other groups getting investors to pay for a mining expedition to go get platinum series metals from some lump of iron out there. And so there will be a lot of different activities going on in space, not just one program, not just one vision. And that's the, the, the beauty of having a, a fully commercial system is where you've got more than one program going on. It's not under NASA's thumb. Yes, I absolutely agree with that. It's going to be, so even before the, the launch costs come down another order of magnitude, um, 
the, the commercial space provided like SpaceX are already uh, come, coming down and that allows us to cheaper access uh, for, for satellites, which is a, 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 a tremendous value, tremendous market. And if we can uh, find value in the asteroids, which Peter Diamandis um, and Eric Anderson are, are exploring, uh, then we'll, uh, we'll be one step closer as well. These days, Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos and uh, Richard Branson get most of the headlines for advocating this human exodus out there commercially. I'm just curious from a behind the scenes point of view, kind of like uh, people like you that can make a difference but you're not the front lines. Are there dozens of people like you that you know believe passionately in colonizing Mars or whatever? Is it a hundred? You know, a thousand? How many are there out there that really think this is a thing? There's not a lot, um, but also I think it's a, there's a dearth of people thinking very clearly about it. I've only put this together myself in the last year. <coughs> and this, the idea that colonization um, is something that's more social and cultural rather than economic, or at least that those are, are very very important factors. So I don't think that there are a lot of people thinking about that. I would love to meet more of them, um, and I, I think that we have some cross pollination to do with some of the other um, uh, alternative culture groups. Um, like the ones that are founding the, the, the countries in the middle of the ocean, like, like seasteading, and yes, like the burners, um, which is a, a wonderful temporary experiment, um, if, if they can get the organization right. <laughs> I think there, the people who are, who are moved away trying to escape government control generally can only do it because the government wants to get rid of them. <laughs> Whereas if they wanted to leave, they probably wouldn't be allowed to. Yeah, yeah. Just to get rid of them and so, so we need outcasts. <laughs> I think we can do that. So we make ourselves objectionable. Uh, Scott. Yeah. So, so basically, you're you're positing that the 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 driving motivation for the first is going to be um, is going to be that that independence that comes from you know total uh, you know disconnection and. Um, Getting far out there. Although I guess I'm the 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 challenge I'm seeing with that is that there's such a the, the technology that is required to enable that is you know is a massive amount that is yet to be developed. And you know, launch is just step one of many to do that. And you know, just like the settlers that came to America, they didn't you know that it's boats existed because you know there were commercial drivers for those existing otherwise, and then they utilized. That existing technology, it, it does, you know, yes, there was high risk, but it doesn't seem like there was a massive technological development to take that next step of going out. There was perhaps more exploration to do with the existing technology, and so you know, like people didn't go colonize Antarctica, even though that would have been pretty unreachable. Um, you know, and it, it even took a very long time for people to get there at all. Um, you know, but the environment was so harsh and hostile that you know, even today, like there's not a lot. That you know, there's not colonies like you know, many many colonies of people. You know, there are small groups of people there. You know, and so I mean, it seems like you really are going to need the commercial, you know, a strong commercial component the whole way to be able to fund the, you know, very substantial technology development required. I mean, absolutely, and you know, of course, that's the reason why at SpaceX we the commercial launch market is a backbone, and you know, we're using the cargo lifting capacity mm -hmm. uh, of the Dragon. Uh, Operate the human rather than doing multiple spacecraft. So, yeah. Okay. Before we uh, before we continue, just to let you know, um, you have another talk in half an hour. Yeah. And so um, you, we have this full half hour free. If you would like to continue answering questions, you're more than welcome to do so. But if you need to take a little time, before... I will need to take a break. So, okay. um, thank thank you for that. But I'll I'll take a couple more questions. So. How do you think the dependence on technology versus natural systems will affect the culture versus the space travel? Can you repeat the question in the mic? Is it, how do you think that the, the dependence on technology versus the technology the dependence on, on natural systems will affect the culture of those? Um, I don't know, but they will. Um, that's something that it's worth giving more thought to. Are you, does SpaceX then have some small pilot programs that are looking ahead 
to the other technological problems, such as the biological ones, physiological ones, um, other than launch, or is it pretty much now focused only on launch? Uh, I don't know about that. Okay. So, bringing up your question, there's a fundamental difference in my mind between saying we should do something over the long stretch of human history, and we should do something now. Um, with respect to the development of technologies and the opportunity costs for other problems in our society now, where do you, where do you fall? Do you feel like we should have we should get this done yesterday? Do you feel we, like here's why I, we need to build alternative cultures. I don't think this one works. I I, this one this one is just um, this one is a, is not optimal. Not in terms of economics. It's not optimal in terms of human happiness. You'll hear about that a little bit later from me at six if you come and join me. Um, and it's not optimal in terms of existential risk. So we've got to have more experiments. And those experiments should be in the water, it should be in the desert, it should be in space. You can figure out how to do it in your basement or in, in some kind of you know, computer <laughs> universe. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that'll be cheaper. Um, but we've got to have we've got to have more social and cultural experiments. <laughs> And it was expected that many of them would die. So it was actually expected that the systems would not work. And this is one of the cultural trends that we, we have fight against, is that the um, sense of risk uh, taking has gotten so dialed back down that we would have never, you know, would have never gone on those ships today. Yeah, but the cost of life were cheaper then. I mean, people die all the time. You grew up and you easily knew dozens of people that died. How many people do you know that died? Lifespans <laughs> 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 were double. That's the time of life had greatly increased, and it's something we're proud of in society. And I think so. You're bringing risk, but in reality, we reduce risk civilization wide tremendously. I don't know if we've actually reduced risk. Um, I think we've just transmuted it into higher risk forms, perhaps, but that's well, a yeah, different topic. Okay. So I think one I would like uh, are you going to qualify what you mean by works as in society culture doesn't work? Because that I think is important to establish criteria so we can decide whether this or something else is better or not. I think I it's a, that's yeah. very detailed and expensive, so I'm sure you don't do it now. The other thing is why are you using European uh, 1600s to 1800s colonization as a model for space colonization, as opposed to other modes of colonization that were in the past and are conceivable in the future. Um, such as which other forms of colonization? Well, I'm sure people were colonizing and moving around the world before the European. <coughs> the, the, I think the reason I'm making analogies is particularly because of the. Yeah, the long journey, large amount of capital, new technologies that are necessary, um, and uh, that it, it feels to me like it's the uh, uh, right uh, type of analogy, but I'm, op I'm open to other ones. Because I would say that the United States was probably a new form of colonization, which resulted in something entirely new, and I don't know if they, there were explicit discussions about how that colonization should work, and whether, hey, let's use the like, Polynesian, I like, guess, you know, that you're in the uh, courts of Europe when they were starting out. Uh, but it seems like they might not have based it on previous politics. Uh, you're saying that it wasn't well, it wasn't really thought through that there's multiple I'm ways sure of doing it. I'm sure it was thought through. I just don't know if using a now seemingly old mode of or model of conversation is the one that you use going forward. Yeah, I, I think it will be. I think it will be different. This is a, this is the best analogy that I have right now. But I, I agree with you. It'll, it'll be different, and there may be better analogies. And we'll talk about some of those. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious about the 
And so, uh, my one worry is that basically whoever controls space controls Earth in the sense of the sphere of violence that you're capable of inflicting on other people. I don't really see the military powers of Earth forgetting people to go up there. It's their liability. It's bigger than any other liability. Strike that from the record. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, I think the forces that be here are, are going to remain extremely interested in, in controlling every every object over a few tons up there, and they're not going to just forget, like, you know, uh, they're going to, maybe if you get really far and you go to Mars, then if you're in another gravity well, you know, it's dangerous, maybe they'll just forget you then, but, like, I think, you know, the Space Navy will be, become real, probably, at least. Yeah, there's a really good point about meeting another gravity well. You feel it's safer if we're in another gravity yeah, well because if you're, if you're if you're floating if you're above the Earth in orbit, um, you are very dangerous, and there, there's a lot of harm you can do by dropping a penny. There's a, there's another <laughs> thing though, know, which this is, which I, I think is how democracies actually make decisions, and it's not based on rationality. Because if we were actually r rationally running our national defense in space, we wouldn't be sending um, uh, fifty billion dollars to the defense contractors that built the space shuttle to yeah. go build another rocket to nowhere. Um, we'd be giving it to Elon yeah. uh, so that he can actually build us a space program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So clearly our government does not fund our space defense optimally. And in fact, currently our satellites can be shot down by the Chinese. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but uh, I agree with you that there is a uh, strategic value to being there and also that there is um, some defense of being down in, in a gravity well. However, I think the psychological factors are um, might be different depending on your location. So if you are just out there, now this may be a difference between being low Earth orbit, where you can potentially you know, you, you know, be seen um, in, in certain conditions, um, you know, binoculars or even, or even naked eye, or being in a, in a further orbit. Um, I, there might be some difference in kind of perception of of, uh, of of people and how they how they view that also versus being on something they know about like oh they're on the moon they're over there and they're looking at us they can you know shoot at us with their lasers so this is all this is all like armchair uh, you know kind of uh, this is, this military is psychology so yeah. democracy psychology it doesn't take a lot of energy to, to do a Lagrange orbit transfer of very large objects that could be a, a city killer a problem killer meaning you know, big so, <coughs> yeah, but I mean, but, it's not like we're not going to blow ourselves up down here either. So. No, we, uh, the biggest nuke you have can't do the damage that a, you know, a megaton object could. So that's the point, though, right? Mutually assured destruction worked. So let's get up there and have <laughs> giant rocks, and then we won't fight with that. Yeah, okay. No. I, I think people just kind of want to go somewhere that's going to look. Someone made the example of us. It looked like Australia. <coughs> You know, a couple hundred years ago, just somewhat you're inhospitable and un, you know unfindable. Um, so I've got a, I actually do have another talk that I want to take a, a break for and prepare. But uh, thank you all very much for your. Thank you.